Who are we? Shit, are we? Who are we? Shit, are we? Who are we? Shit, are we? Call baby. BFC. Here, here we, we go. go. Here we go. Listen, guys. Big up to every one of you in here, man. Big up. Big up. Seriously, big up. Uh, what can we say? The title says it, I think. What did I put on the title? <laughs> Eric Tan Hag is your savior after watching that. One of his coaches went, Eric, it's really nice offer. Yeah, yeah. But I'll see you tomorrow, pal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we are. So let's discuss it, Saeed. Yeah. Is Eric Ten Hag going to be coming with a Harry, Harry... What's... Houdini. Harry Potter Houdini. <laughs> Is he going to come with a wand and Look, shake it around? He's going to do this story. And then. do that smell. Please make my United better. Uh, 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 stop. It's not working. It's not working. That's United, people. But big up to everybody who's watching, man. Make sure you smash a like on the video as you tune in. You get me? But we've just finished a straight jacket podcast. We're here. We're on Lurid's channel. After this, people, seriously, it's 400 short of 50 fast. And what would yeah, be an, an incredible achievement. Man. And uh, all of the graphs that he's put in in the past couple of years. So if any of you are on, on here, please make sure you go to Saeed TV and subscribe to that channel. And also like that button so it gets the algorithms. Up. And can we please do that on here as well? If you're new around here, people, yeah, last week, sure, you know here... Sure. With same with a straight jacket, but we don't shy away from the hard topics. No, nope. it got heated. I got heated a minute there because yeah. the propaganda. I'm I'm just so sick of the propaganda. It, man. I'm so sick for the pop of the propaganda. So big up to Aiden Tenno, big up to everybody here, man. Big up to Tom Natalie. Have you ever seen it, how easy it's been to kind of like fall for it? It's crazy, isn't it? When you look at it, like how easy it's to fall for it. Big up to you, man. Big up to listen to me. It is what it is. Yeah, and I'm telling you now, the biggest thing. Almost Tan Hag said it the other day as well. It's like, like those kids. It is what it is. It is what it is. Tom, and have you got any latest you. news for us, Tom, man? <laughs> because we need to hear about the propaganda. Because I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm Tom has got... Tom on, yeah, yeah, someone. yeah. Tom, mate, let us know what the latest propaganda is. What's Rutten said? The type of project I feel uncomfortable with it. What? Who's this? <laughs> this oh. is this is the guy who said no to us. Oh, this is I mean, I that's wow. one, one, one of his coaches. Oh, she's a... He said, Eric Tanak asked me to be his assistant by United. I said, no. Everybody makes his own life choice. If I have a family, I have a grandchild. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then, continue. He says this. Big up. Tom, He goes, um, at this time, budget, I feel uncomfortable with. And he goes, at my United, you get on a train and you, and you can't get off it. I want to feel comfortable. It's something to step into. This is the case with PSV. Comfortable. Wow. Come to Ball FC. The there guy we said, go. <laughs> at my United, you get a train and you can't get off it. You know why as well? Because you got to realise as well, Noreen, when you come off that train as well... It's you, crashes. It's crashes. <laughs> it crashes. You know what I mean? Got, literally goes off the rails and smashes into the buildings. Oh, my God, people. Tom, I've sent it to you. I've sent you a link. Check it out. Uh, Big up Therapy Army. Big up to you, man. <laughs> And that's, you know, that's damaging you know, on United's part. But that just shows you that United is not a team where it's not. It's you not. can just say. It's not. And you know, these coaches, they know the things that people don't know. People speak in football. Yeah. In football, people know what's going on at the football clubs. Yeah. They know what's going on. He's got people, Dutch Dutch guys coaching in, in England. Some yeah. Dutch guys are coaching at Arsenal. Some Dutch guys are coaching what's different places. Tom? Big up, what, Tom. What's happening, brothers? How are we doing? Who are we? Shit, are we? Who are we? <laughs> are we? Shit, are we? <laughs> well, so I've been waiting. I've been waiting uh, to see what the level of the propaganda is going to be like at Man United. And I've been waiting, genuinely waiting patiently for Monday. So t- mm. this morning, as soon as I got up, I started to look around and go, right, this is happening. This is happening. This is not happening. Yep. And I'm trying to find out. And then all of a sudden it comes out. Structure. Man United are working on the structure. Man United are doing, <laughs> Man United are doing this. Man United are like, game, this man. is the old news, mate. A hashing old news. Uh, the media guy's going to be sacked. Uh, oh, oh listen, yeah. Char- Charlie Brooks. Yeah. Listen to me. I say it and I say it simple. What have you found out? Through your obviously journalistic contact, mm. I know that you can't give us the contacts. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah, talk yeah. about things that I found out is but looks like Eric Ten Hag is gonna be the savior. Mr. Rotten said that club is rotten. I ain't going nowhere near it, mate. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Fred Fred Rotten said the other Fred has not done that well. I'm not getting bantered like the other Fred. Yeah, the Fred Durant, and that mate. club is rotten, and I'm not going anywhere near. He basically says here. Uh, you get the tr- uh, Man United. You can get on a train and can't get off it because that train 
it's forever. Where is it going? Going off one destination of on yep. one cliff, mate. He's going yep. up that cliff. Yeah. He ain't jumping the rails. He ain't jumping. He's going one <laughs> way, going up that cliff. That's what that that's what he's doing. So at the end of the day, it's an absolute joke. It's a shit show, man. When you look at it, it's an absolute calamity. Look, you know, for, you, yeah, this, type yeah. of, this type of project I felt uncomfortable with. What does he mean by that, people? Let's get it cracking. What does he mean by that? I felt <laughs> uncomfortable because he saw club arguing with Eric Ten Hag. Yes, you heard it of the press, yeah. fresh of the press. This is what mm -hmm. I'm hearing that they're arguing still about his other members of his backroom staff. Yeah, who the hell are they to argue with Eric Ten Hag? Who he wants to bring in when he's going to be the man who takes the bullet? Well, it's not. It's not so much as he's arguing, Nuruddin. It's more a case of his assistant, Michelle Van der Gaak. Anybody who wants to know, or he's probably been out there for people to know and everything. He was actually offered the permanent role at Ajax to be the head team coach, which is what Van der Sar had offered him. But he decided that he wanted to go along with Eric Ten Hag to Manchester United, yeah. and in doing so, by that he's. In a, I guess you could say hesitated over certain clauses and certain assurances that Eric Ten Hag might have, but him being the coaching staff or one of the more leading members being the assistant coach, he doesn't have any priorities or any rights on the training ground, if that makes any sort of sense. Where we look at it, people have always asked about what's Darren Fletcher's role, why is he on the coaching staff, blah, blah, blah. When you, when you look at somebody who of the like of Michel van der Gaak, who's an experienced coach, working with proper players who are technically gifted, working with proper sports psychologists, you know, nutritionists, all the greatest people that do the brilliant jobs with the young players at Ajax. Yeah. And then you come to Manchester United where you don't have any of those luxuries. You don't have major sports science scientist department. You don't have a health and development department. You don't have a, a youth development project where the youth team plays the same way as the first team. And it's yeah. an easy transition over. You don't have these things. And these are the sort of assurances that he looks at and thinks, I'm coming in and I'm going to be doing all this sort of work where I'm going to be working one-to-one -one with players. He's a brilliant one-to-one -one coach. Anybody who wants to know about Michel van der Gaal, go and do your research on him and you'll find out loads about him. He speaks five different languages. Then his whole yeah, coaching... Trained in Portugal, trained coach, in Portugal. Co yeah, yeah, yeah. Coaching education coaching, in Portugal. Yeah. yeah, very very similar to how Mourinho has, was in, I guess, in the past where he had the more... I guess the, the passive aggressiveness in terms of when he needs to get tough with the players, he will do, but he will always be there to support the players through the systems. But the one thing that he always does, and I've been told he's very good at, is he's very good at commanding the training ground. Yeah. Along with along with the manager, he's not only just worked with Eric Ten Hag, he has worked with some brilliant Dutch coaches and he's been over in Germany as well. He has worked under system coaches where they do the basis of such as high line, such as defensive compactness at the back. Very, very hard to do in the Bundesliga where we know it's high lines, it's pressing, it's, you know, throw flow attacking football. We all know what the Bundesliga is like and the transition that happens for players. For, yep. coaches, it's, for coaches, it's the exactly the same thing. Trying to bring those ideas to the Premier League. Klopp didn't do it overnight. Tuchel's not well, he doing didn't, it in, but he had in back five in minutes. The right way, though. That's exactly. The thing. That's the thing. He had back in the right way. And even yeah. when Klopp knew that he had his uh, assistant coach at the time, which was Philippe Belikovic, who was his assistant coach at the time, they worked all the way from Mainz, Dortmund, all the way to Liverpool. Two years into that, he realised that his assistant wasn't modern. He wasn't good enough to play the way that he wanted to take the Liverpool team. So he ended up shifting him out and he ended up then going and getting um, the new guy. I can't remember what his name is now. Pepe Lengers, I think his name was now. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot his name anyway. He's a brilliant assistant coach. Listen, who, who well, but you know what? The, the, the thing, Tom, the guy that we're talking about is Fred Rotten. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's, yeah. Club, he's, he's, that listen, club Fred, is Rotten. I yeah. don't want to go near that club. My name is Fred Rotten. I don't want to go deep. <laughs> but he's Ten Hag doesn't just have one assistant. He's got many different assistants who do, and the coach that they work together as a coaching team. But when he mm. comes out and says, "Man United on the train is hard to get off," and he's making it out. Prefacing that, making it out like Man United are based on Australia. You know how many flights go between Amsterdam and Manchester Airport? It's one of the other hours, right? And it's like, oh, well, I've got, I'm staying for my kids. No, Manchester United, Tom, used to be the pinnacle of the highest standard for any yeah, aspiring yeah. coach or back on staff to go and work there to put that on your CV. And now we're a laughing joke. Anyway, well, we, we, we brought through some of the best coaches, haven't we, though? 
exactly. when you do look at Carlos Queiroz, Renny Mullenstein, you know, even even like Sir Steve McLaren and stuff, for example, as an assistant yeah. coach, he was the they're innovator. brilliant at assisting. He's the innovator. And now, apparently, Ten Hag, somebody told me today that Ten Hag wants um, McLaren, but the club are saying no. Who the hell are you to say no? Well, they've not contacted McLaren. That's the reason why. They've not why, contacted why him. Saying, no, I don't understand it. Though. What, what makes them think that they're bigger than not really and better than te, you know Steve McLaren? Because Listen, they might, well, they might, want, to move, they might want to move on from these things. This is the problem. They might think we want somebody well, with fresh ideas. Well, Man United want to move on from these things, but McLaren is one of the most successful coaches at Man United. We want a bloody treble. I, it doesn't. Make, I never said it made sense, but these are the sort of things that you do think about. Of and course. You but, can't. You can't. Like we say, we can't change a club structure overnight. It is going to take time. At the end yeah. of the day, Tom, it's gonna change overnight. <laughs> no, 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 I said it. Ca- I said it well. I said it well. well, well don't, well, don't well. try and twist the words to me, <laughs> Tom. I'm just telling you, I'm having a bit of banter with you. This is a <laughs> long term, five or six years, and and that's if Man United Absolutely. want to change. That is yep. if Man United want to change, and we go from being bankers, comedy FC, we go being back to being a football club. But anyway, Fabrizio says. I think the the, the fullback position, position is fullback. something imminent. I don't see imminent. it's not imminent. I'm spending crazy money on fullback. At least the position win. No, but you know what, Fabrizio? I don't know who you're briefing you now. <laughs> good, good fullbacks are now are valuable in football. Mate, the way you want to play. The way you want to play. They are fantastic. So Man United are now obsessed with a striker. If you had a good team, stop being... That's what I'm saying to you. They always need a striker to save them. I know. Every Why time. do you need a guy to spend the money on? Say, Man United need... To a new effing midfield. Have you been paying attention? Are you going to play still a high pressing number eight? And you're going to play a box to box number eight? You're going to play them again and think you're going to get somewhere next season? Mm. Yeah, shoe hard, we have been bullied. Tell me a midfield team that not bullied us other than Bro. Brentford. Bro, exactly. Other than Brentford, yeah. Other I, mean, Brentford. They, they, I mean, well, in the reverse fixture, Brentford did do that, did they not? They did. They did, they did it was, yeah, did it towards, yeah. It's true. Listen, 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 listen. Fabrizio, <laughs> I used to step back in the day. Fabrizio now is a tapping merchant. That's all he is, man. I see him g- repeating the same things that journalists are repeating yeah, course, again course, and again. Course. Back in the day, he was the guy. At that moment in time, I think it's dry season for him. So now he's coming out. What I look out for is more uh, uh, all the steel for the yeah, that, that, yeah, David Orange. Like, well, all the things on the BBC. He's athletic, athletic, athletic. He used to work for the BBC. But you know what? He sometimes can't explain shit as well. He just chats waffle as well. They all reject it because regardless who's briefing them, and you know the club will brief one journalist one thing, and then the other journalist one, and they contradict each other. But at the end of the day, we know that Neil Ashton's there in control, mate. Typing away, of course. Come rain or shine, whether you know I get whacked or not. Manchester United yeah. have sacked the PR guy. <laughs> Manchester United yeah. are working on the structure. How long ago did Darren Fletcher? And Murta get involved. That was a year and a half ago. But then now, this morning, telling me what they told me a year and a half ago. Yeah. Tom, so mm. I need to ask the question again. Yeah. Before we'll come to the Rio in a minute, people. But I'll ask the question again. Where do they think is that that Man United, that Eric Tucker is going to walk in like yeah. Harry, like Harry Potter, like this is a film, and just going to go <laughs> oh, smells everywhere, yeah. smells shiny, like, like the Maguire one, isn't it? When, when we talked about Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> tell them that. Tell them the story. Oh tell them the God. story. We were having a debate about Maguire, and we thought, you know what, he could come in and you know fix our defense. But little did we know. And what did I tell you? Right, that Maguire moment, he's not going to come in and, and basically wave a wand, and and everything's going to be fixing. Yeah, it's true. The re- yeah, big up, um, Candanine Dixon. The rejection of Man United needs to happen is a lot more. The more top coaches and players reject United, the ball will have no choice but to change. But don't you know what? making bad decisions, mate, until they Listen, leave. Dixon, I wish you that was right. <laughs> so I think a list of players we, we, we got rejected in the last how many years? Well, you know, you're looking at Haaland now, you're looking at Adeemi, you're looking at the, the, the uh, you're looking at uh, Jude Bellingham, <laughs> you know, you're looking at so many players that have come on trial and said, yeah, see you later. You know what I mean? There's so many players that have just come in <laughs> and be like, yeah, Haaland. And also, United have turned mm. the nose down on this brother here from Brighton who could have been in our field. Casido. 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 United fan, Casido. United fan because they um, thought yeah, yeah. Would be the, yeah. we're the next Roy Keane so they said no Tom and you will know Tim Figury you know Tim Figury he's a he's a, he's a yeah, Brazilian, Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, yeah no he's, he's South he's, American you know, yeah, South American expert mm. football expert Tim he Vickery. talked to Tim Figury he talked about it he said he said Casido's got an incredible talent he's got incredible things he'd be amazing for Man United he will take time for him to adapt but he's a player Man United worth getting 
He said that. And what did he do? Bangs it in through the legs of uh, and yeah. right into the corner. I see that and he had to take the shot quickly. People think that that shot was just a, it wasn't a fluke. He had to take it quickly. Yep. He had mm. to take it quickly. But at the end of the day, Tom, you were out. I think, were you on the barbecue, innit? So he, Tom was having yeah, a barbecue. Yeah. Okay, okay. T- T- Thomas on the barb. He wasn't letting Man United spoil it, but no, you already no, saw I the photo. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You already saw the f- photo. I'll come into it. We're in 20, 15 minutes in. Do you believe that Eric Ten Hag is the saviour and he's coming with the... <laughs> he's coming <laughs> with um, the Harry Potter wand or what? Tom? Right, right, I'm here. Repeat Ask what you that. said, lads, because you were like... I- Neil Ashton interference. Neil, it's Neil. Neil, Neil. Neil's got him. Neil's, <laughs> Neil's got, got him. Neil's got him. If you want to go out and come back in, mate, we'll come let you back in. But I, I'll ask the question to you, Got. There ain't nobody come to save you. I, I'm, I keep repeating it. I have to repeat myself, Saeed. Yeah. I have to repeat myself. You're big up Kevin Dix, uh, K- Kidan. Is it Kidan? K- 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 uh, Not Dixon. unless this structure this changes big up for and the he wants chat. to change its ways. Not unless they do that, Noreen. It's not going to change. Exactly. It's not going to change. They're used to United brand on their own ends. That's what they are. It it's is what it is. It's United brand for their own ends. Exactly. Yeah, of course they are. Man, no, 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 do you know the clash, the rock? So about the Glazers don't like it. Fuck. <laughs> do you know the American clash, days. rock, the Casper? Do you know the rock, the Casper? Rock, the Casper. I know the clash. Tom, if you come back in, we'll let you back in. Uh, do you know the clash? Rock, the Casper. Have a, have, have, have a look for me, sir. Rock the Casper. I know the Clash. Clash were a Clash were a band in the nineteen from nineteen seventies. Um, Clash really good. Joe Strummer is part of the Clash, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're actually a band. Yeah, and Rock the Cas uh, the the, the Casper. Yeah, yeah. I know the Clash. I, I don't know that much about um, Rock Casper. Uh, okay, but I know the Clash. The Clash were a really good good band. I watched a documentary about Joe Strummer. And and I'm sure one of their songs is London's Burning. Yeah. I think I think that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. The clash, yeah. So hey, we talk about it. Here, you know me, I'm always on media watch. Always, I'm always, always on about framing. But today was a perfect propaganda. day to bring it all out, you know, all that propaganda, all right. that nonsense. Today was a perfect day to bring it all out and say to everybody, get excited and say this and that. It was a perfect day, though. Of course. Really. So Rio Ferdinand comes out match reaction and he doubles down and get the game today somebody sent me the clip hold tight to abdul who sent me the clips yeah he basically is he's, he's coming out saying rav ranik does not need does not need to speak anymore about the club where do you stand on that side <sighs> tom, I, 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 tom me, that's a bit difficult to hear I'll come because back i feel to you like in a minute, for me rav yeah, yeah. so refreshing has been so open has been so honest and i feel like for me i was literally losing my air because oliver Solskjaer made it like a a very, very kind of you know harmonious. Background. He said, "Oh, he's all, all going to show." Us. I said, "He likes them. He's got no problem with the owners. He gets yeah. on with Ed Woodward." Yeah, They'd obviously, as an me. employee, you, you, I know you can't slag off your employees, right? But you could say that this, 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 this thing need happening. But he glamorized it so much. Of course, like, of, like everything was good, made. everything was all right, because yeah. you know what I mean. Everything was rosy, rosy. There you go. Right. So. Mm-hmm. End of the day, when you got to look at it, it's for me. But why? Why do you think Rio Ferdinand is running into? I think you know he's a, he's, he's probably mm. he was saying as well. By the way, that he had some of the players' agents coming up and saying to him, "Yo, can you write this about him, or can you talk about this player about this way?" And he was like, "No, I'm going to say the truth." I think he's got to a point now where he's seeing how many United it is as a mess, and he's almost like he can't. He, he doesn't want it to be like this. And I feel like Rio Ferdinand as well is confused. He's probably looking at it thinking, "Bloody hell, man! I don't want to hear more." He don't want to hear more. For me, what he, he said, doesn't want to hear more. He basically said, uh, Ralph is deflecting from the result. No, Ralph is not deflecting. But he should have said that. Results. Rio should not have said that, though. Right. Ralph's not deflecting from the, from the results. Ralph, I want to hear more every, truth, though. Ralph Rannick has not scapegoated anybody else and said, and he's already come out. He was asked, Have your coaching staff, have you done well? No, he said, It's been a failure this season. It has been a failure. So he means him as well. He's not run away. He's not run away from a press conference. Yeah. He's answered every question as honestly as he can. But you know what Rio Ferdinand thinks? Well, we can't. It can't be uh, dirty laundry in public. Tom, I want everybody knows where I stand. I'm like, get more of that dirty laundry out. More, get that spinning, that washing <laughs> machine. There's more needs to go in. More of it needs to come out. But I want to know where you stand, Tom. I want to know where you stand. Listen, 160 of you watching, please smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Because here, and on the Straight Jacket podcast on Saturday TV, you get 
we're not going to hold back. This mm. ain't no brand to protect people. I'm not never, you're never going to hear me run, run cover and run interference for the Glazers and the bankers because Rio gets access to the stadium. He has access to the coaching staff. He has access to the training ground. Dirty laundry, 10 years in the wilderness. And Rio, you already admitted you were a man United not to do well and didn't want to be forgotten. That was the honesty of you. That was really refreshing and honest of you. But now you're coming out for the only guy in 10 years who spoke the truth. Jose did the truth in a different way. Banga did the truth in a different mm. way. But this guy, systematically, everything that's wrong, what you see on that football pitch is one decision-making from every decision-making at the top of this football club. Yeah. So, Tom, I want to know where you stand on Rio. Did you see the Rio? If not, I'll power phrase it for you. I've Listen, no, no, I'll power phrase it for you. Rio yeah, said, Ralph Raniak needs to stop talking in the press conference. He literally said, no, if he, I, he said, said he said, if I'm in that club, I won't let him do another press conference. <laughs> For what reason? Because what reason, yeah. he said, you're putting your dirty in laundry yeah. in public. That's why he said, no, you have to look at it. That's why he said exact those words. But go ahead, Tom. Well, if you don't get rid of the dirty laundry, how are you going to get the clean, fresh ones? Yeah, You know, yeah. it's as simple as that. If, you, if, if Rio Ferdinand was to come out with the comments and all, all these things and everything, why don't you have a go at it then? Why why weren't he employed as the PR manager instead of Ralph Hogenstein? Why wasn't he employed as the director of football when he was getting linked for, I don't know how many, three, four months? And he wasn't he, he didn't even get the phone call from the club. So I don't honestly know what it, what ex-players and stuff owe this football club. I really don't. When, when you, when, you, honestly, honestly, and I, I, say, I say this honestly with the open heart, when you hang up your football boots to this football club, don't come back. Honestly, do not come. Don't come back as a coach. Don't come back to try and do your education here and try and learn the game because you learn nothing but failure at this current time. And don't try and be something that you're not. Darren Fletcher, for example, no qualification in terms of running a football club. I, I, posing as if he's an assistant coach, director of football, you know, di director and negotiator of transfers work, now. You know, he, he has his hand in a bit of everything now. This is the, what I mean, where we need to move past these sort of things where you have people who are in cohesion with the football club, have links with the football club. Name, honestly, and I want an honest answer now, name me a, a football club legend at Manchester City that is still employed there after they've finished playing. Yeah. You can't, you can't name me one. That's the funny thing. Same thing with Liverpool. You cannot honestly name me one. There isn't one out there to be named, other than because pundits are not employed by football clubs. Broadcasters, but, journalists but, but, are not employed by pundits, football clubs. But, but pundits do deals and do commercial deals with ex-legends. Uh, sorry, uh, clubs do that. And clubs have certain access that they won't have any other place at the end of the day. So I'll tell you what, he's, he's basically saying that. Um, he's questioned Ralph Rankin's decision to air the dirty laundry out in public at United. He's saying, personally, I couldn't agree with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so not, not putting the dirty, dirty laundry out in public has worked for Man United fans and has worked for us, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. So it's worked for... So so basically, Rio saying, that's worked, yeah? So Rio, the brass neck of you coming out with that, bro, it's embarrassing. You need to look at yourself in the mirror, bro. Seriously. I know you're a commercial brand guy now. I know that's how you make your money. But please, don't let that... But we don't need listen, everything in-house, though. Listen, I don't listen, understand this. Don't let that though. seep into your... Mm. You're a pundit at the end of the day. Your honesty. Don't. Don't, mate. Don't. I'm not here for that. Listen, uh, so, so, I'm not asked about his morals. I just, need him, no. I just need him to be honest. I need him to have an honest opinion. That's I all, that's all we've ever asked opinion. in this football he club. Says he, he, he says, he he says it's nice for sometimes the fans, you know, you want to get a bit of insight, but there's information that he's been let out that he shouldn't be. He's still in the job, man. Relax. Have some respect for the people around you. <laughs> For me, they don't, they don't deserve respect, these guys. But man. this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, Saeed. Say it for the people on the back, please. Get that quote again. It's, it's, nice it's nice sometimes for the fans. You want to get a bit of insight. But it's information that he's been let out that he shouldn't be. You're still in the job, man. Relax and have some respect for the people around you. But for me, though, <laughs> they don't deserve respect, man. Because at the end of the day, look at, look at all these players and what they've been doing for the last three or four years. True. You know what? It's to me, joke. if you read everything he said, 
Why are you throwing my brethren who let me into the training ground? My brethren who are helping me get my brand out, who who who, who are bringing more commercial people for me to come on do uh, advertise Old Trafford and all this stuff. Why are you, Ralph, having a go at them? Well, today I've been told they're not listening to things that Ralph's saying. Yeah, they've not been listening. So that's why Ralph is frustrated and he's saying it. And and when the journalists ask. He's telling them exactly what where the problem lies at this football club. Saying, like it's just happened like that. These journalists and majority of United fans just think things happen in a vacuum. All of a sudden, Saeed and Nuruddin are sitting at that desk in Saeed and Nuruddin's yeah, flat. Yeah, of course. No, things don't happen in a vacuum. Saeed made his way here, traveled here. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, say hello to the skulls and seed off. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And a, yep. Set the lights up. You know what I mean? When I'm out there feeding another cat, they come, I come back and then we sit down. We didn't just appear. Like Harry Potter land. Yeah. Real person <laughs> wanted Harry Potter land, Neil Ashton world. That <coughs> view to be out there. So mm. when Ralph Rannick is telling the hierarchy at this football club, this is why you got here. This is how you fix it. Rio's like, you can't be there in longer the outside. You yeah. can't do that. Relax. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> Further read it again because he says... He says we've got some more quotes here. He goes... Um, he continued, for the great work that he's done at previous clubs, a lot of the recruitment and bringing players in, he's been brought in to manage and, and manage this team and navigate to Champions League football. He's failed in that department, and that's undeniable. But again, Lord, again, um, Rio, I think you're thinking like, you know, short-sighted. I think there's a there's an element of there, of the situation that's happened. You look at the players that have been brought in. None at all. You look at the players that have been shipped out too many. You look at the well, media, what? Sa Saeed, let, let me let me ask you a question. When, when the club denied Ralph to go and buy a midfielder in January, I'm when you know he's up. a brilliant recruiter of player or a striker, a brilliant recruiter yeah. of players, and he yeah. hardly, it's very rare that his Red Bull Sporting Group project that he ran and everything, they buy young, hungry players yeah. who develop, who develop, and it, if they don't develop, they clear then they don't buy them. It's as simple as that. If they don't see something in them. Why did they not give Ralph that honesty then? If he's this brilliant recruitment guy like Rio's just spoken about, why didn't they give him that opportunity? And do you know something, right? Do you know the thing? There is no answer. One minute, Tom. One minute. Let me just get this super chat. Big up, yeah, Usman Vic. I'm going. I'm coming back to you. Yeah, Vic or is it Vic or Vic? Yeah. Nerding saying <laughs> saying. Don't worry, we don't we hold back it. here. Have you ever held back in your life? No, you know me too well, Usman. Big up, Usman. I know Saeed <laughs> has headache. <laughs> also, you should make videos about the best players you've seen. We will. I promise you, I will do that. Yeah. It's going to be a lot to talk about because I, I, I'm not going to be talking about um, as soon as we get the bit of the break um, season ends. We're going to be talking about that. The best yeah, players yeah. I've seen. Yeah, the best player I think at the moment. We're going to be doing videos. Yeah, and yeah. It's going to be more mm. story time as well. But uh, big up. Thank you for the super chat. Tom, I'll come to you. I'll let you answer the question again because it looks like I've hijacked it and the quotes have come. Now that you've heard the quotes, do you <laughs> agree with Rio? Yes or no? Absolutely not. But no. I, what, what, is, what is there honestly to agree with, really? I mean, every, every, I understand you've got to protect your brand. You've got to protect your image. He has got to protect, in a way, think about his job before he does his words at the end of the day because you're all right saying all these things about ownerships at football clubs, not even just Man United. You might not have access to certain football clubs, training grounds, players, do interviews for your broadcasting organisation that you work for with BT Sport. You won't have those contacts or those accesses like you do if you keep going on about these things. Why do you think he never slagged Mauricio Pochettino off? Yeah, why, do you think, why do you think he never did it? Why do you think whenever he was asked about his credentials and everything, he always spoke so highly of him? Then yeah. two weeks later, he goes to Paris and does an interview with him on the yeah. tactical analysis before the Real Madrid game, where Mbappe walks in, anybody who's watched the videos on YouTube, everybody knows that you have to protect yourself before you protect your opinion. And at the end of the day, this is why I love it where you have ex-football players, you have, ex you have people who don't have a job outside of football. Yeah. As soon as they leave football, they'll go and set up some businesses and they'll run them, as opposed to having a hand in football. They're the people who give you the honesty, the raw truth of it about what is actually going on at football clubs. For example, you get brilliant you know, players who have played so many years at football clubs. They just don't want to be associated with football any longer. They don't fancy having a go at coaching or punditry. They just think, that's that's me. I've got everything into football. I want to focus on family or I want to focus on yep. my life. 
Yeah, and really? you know something? They're the honestest people that you will ever meet in terms of what actually goes on at football clubs. Those sort of ex-players who have no links left at any football club. Because like you're right. saying, you can clearly see it with Rio. He was at the football club, dec- well, ne- I'd say nearly a decade ago now. When you do look at a decade on, nothing has changed, Rio. The only thing that has really changed, in all honesty, is we've got worse over time. And we have neglected the problems year after year, time after time again. And we've never got rid of them. It's like nope. when you have weeds. It's like when you have weeds in a garden. You've got to get rid of the weeds yep. if you want it to grow, grow flush and grow brilliantly yep. for the summer. It doesn't happen at Manchester United, and this is the cultural problem that we have always had. And we, I know Nuruddin's always banged on about it, and you as well, Said, with straight to yep. the podcast with the club structure. It has been a problem for years, even since yeah. these guys came in. How can you honestly sit there and appoint? financial advisors, financial backgrounded people to run a football club who have no sporting qualifications. I can accept if you have a qualification of you've run a multi-organisation sports club, whether it be the NFL, whether it be a football team, a rugby team, a a boxing (laughs) organisation. If you've run something to do with sports, you know what you're doing. But just to run finances, anybody can run finances. We all pay bills. We all pay mortgages. We all pay housing benefits, cars, petrol prices. We all pay these sort of things to live our lives at the end of the day. And it, and, and these are the sort of things where we look at it in the modern world where you have ex-players who are all in with the football club. This is the problem. And until you get these sort of people out of your football club, away from away from the, the media, the public eye, for over time, then they come out and expose it. And it's it's not a case of you do it every so often when things are going bad and it's a brilliant thing for the broadcaster that you might work for. For example, Rio Ferdinand with BET if he comes out and slates off Manchester United. Yeah, it might get a, a couple of more views for them at the end of the day because everybody loves to see a meltdown, don't they? Especially with football, especially around football and football Twitter, as we all know. But unless you get people, like you say, distance themselves from the football club who are not at the football club, they're the people that I would be interviewing if I go on in my journalistic career for you know a few more years and stuff, and I build up the contacts and things, I won't be going to people who work for broadcasters who have links with football clubs. They're not the people you want to talk to about football, because yeah, they might have the knowledge of today. The knowledge of today is what Manchester City and Liverpool have completely taken this league by storm and blow everybody else away. We know in Europe these the top five major leagues, Man United can't compete in any of those leagues, really, if we are being honest in the current state that we're in. I don't know a league that we would compete in and even get into a top four in. Even if you include the leagues like the Dutch League, the Portuguese League, these teams have systems. These teams have players that want to work hard, want to actually give something for the football club. You have teams like Benfica, Sporting Lisbon in Portugal. You have Ajax and PSV, these sort of teams in the Dutch League. A team will always outride individuals. And that is the modern day of how football has worked. A team will always write it out individuals. And like I say, we're the same thing with the club structure, where we do look with the people who are behind the scenes, who have been here for decades upon decades, like we've sacked the two senior scouts, Marcel Bout and, and Jim Lawler. You know, thank you for your service, yeah. You, you know, your, t- your time's up. Your time is up. If you can't run a recruitment process for two, three years where you're getting... No, maybe not even two, three years. I guess you know, eighteen months to two years, where you're getting players with the right attitudes. We, we say all the time about quality of players. Why are you not doing your research into what the family life is, the home life, personal life? Do they look after themselves? Do they actually care about you know what about how yeah. they are, about their person? You know, find out the characters in these people, personalities. It's almost as if we're buying players in the dark, really. Yeah. Where, where all we see is the YouTube clips. That tells you a completely different story. Actually, phone the people around them. That's all we've talk, bought, talk, by the way. Tell us as a YouTube people. player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. T- tell us. Exactly. That's a prime example. Tell us as a YouTube player. We see. looked at Ajax maybe and thought, oh, system player. Well, well, we, 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 we saw Van der Sar, didn't we? He put, he put the discount price on it for us and he mm-hmm. thought, yeah, there we go. We'll have yeah. a bit of a spin at that. Listen, and, big and, up Sherbert, man. Big up Sherbert, 0161. Rio yeah, down yeah, yeah. on the Moyes and led the revolt. Remember Olympiakos away 2-0? Yeah, I remember that. 
And I'll, I'll never forget that Olympiacos game. Big up, Rio Ma. Welcome, brother. Listen, there's nearly 200 of you here. Please smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. If not Should subscribe. be 150 likes. Easy. Guys, please go over to Saeed TV yeah. after you watch this and make sure you subscribe. Yeah, come on, people. Subscribe. And he's almost 400 away. 400 away oh. from 50. 50,000. So, yeah. Stay where you are. Uh, big up, man. There's Rio Ma. Nuruddin, I, I, I have hope. <laughs> Arnold Murta have changed the structure. Don't break our hope. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what did you say? Don't break our hope. Don't there's there's it, no hope listen, to break. Don't thing, break my heart. Listen, there's no hope and there's no heart, mate, in this football club. Simple. At the end of the day, you see what you saw. Big up Rio Mark anyway. Listen, it's a false hope if it's going to be a hope. Malcolm, um, yep. uh, if if we if we this project, if we want this project to concede, we can't be having people like Rio talking us down. <laughs> Shall I try to finish your quotes, by the way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go ahead, say, go ahead. Basically, he, he ended up saying, um, what did he end up saying here? I'm sure you know here. Because he ended up like going back again on what he's actually saying, which is quite funny, actually. Uh, he goes here, uh, he goes, but then he's shifted the blame all over the place. And that's a bit really, I find a bit distasteful. <laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> mate, the players are to blame. He's trying to say no, no, but he's talking about the board as well. He's talking about like, no, but, the, no, but the thing is, though, he, he can't be talking about the board because he's talking about like the way you look at it, it goes, but he's shifting the blame all over the place. And that's a bit I really find a bit little bit, but he is also, yeah, he is also talking about the injuries. Maybe talk about the injuries, yeah, yeah, the, the injury rehab yeah. people, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Fergie believes a couple of officials speak with Ralph Franklin about the way and manners he conducts himself at press conferences. He goes, he continues to say, he so was that Fergie, what he, no, he goes here. Um, Ferdinand believes the club officials. Uh, top officials speak to Ralph Ragnick about the way and the manners he could So he's just himself. basically he's basically saying Ralph Ragnick needs to be gagged. <laughs> Gagging order on him. Get a gag yeah. in order. He wouldn't he couldn't bring in a, <laughs> he, he was brought in as a consultant first and foremost, then to do the stuff in the change room. But with the long term thinking he would be behind the scenes working out where he needed to squad develop and recruitment. He's offered up big games and certain talents and he feels that like he would have a huge impact immediately short term, long term, but he's not used to being backed. I think that's where the frustration lies. He mentioned Diaz Vlahovic. Um, he yeah. said that Ford declined to move because they wait for the summer. I think the impatience with that and the frustrations are being born out of these interviews now. I'll be honest, if I was a club, I wouldn't allow him to do another press conference. <laughs> wow, that's that's <laughs> a bit for me. I, I can't I can't take that. Like, gang, like literally that real for that me. That is to me, that is what you call protecting the glazers and your bankers who give you access to the club, mate. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. That for me, I, I, that, that's a shocking comment, by the way, Rio. I, I just don't understand that one. For me, to, for him to say that he shouldn't do another press conference when Oliver Solskjaer was filling us with utter delusion. There utter delusion, mate. Big up Super Nick. Super Nick right on the money here. Certain players are protecting the club to ensure they have some kind of involvement in the future. Uh, have <laughs> they been made promises on their silence and compliance? Of course they have. Of course they are. Well, they they, they sign clothes. They sign clothes at the football but club. Not even that. But it's to get access. It's to it's yeah. brand. It's branding and to get access. Rio Ferdinand around the world now. Anywhere he goes, is mobbed because everybody knows he's still on the football pitch. That's why him Varane coming off the pitch. Who do you yeah. think set all that up? Yeah. The club <laughs> mate. The club mate. Who do you think he, he takes his brand company to the Old Trafford to get them in the box? Yeah. And all that. Come on now, dude. That's how you do deals. Brand protection, but you're right on the money. You know, Footy Live, uh, you have seen the heard the 90s Ajax documentary about training and preparation. Yeah, yeah. On YouTube and everything's missing. You know, of yeah. course, I've watched that. Shabeta, I've watched that so many times. I watched that so many times. I also watched documentaries. Well, I'll give you another one. A Rico Saki documentary about that great AC Milan team that, oh, that, yes. um, that literally uh, defended the old European Cup. They were the first cup club to defend cup, that yeah, European yeah, Cup yeah. In, in the modern era, not in the 1960s where fascism and football were won. Talk about uh, Spain, Madrid, by the way. I don't count their first four trophies, you know, the first four Who? or five European Cups they'd won, Real Madrid. I don't count them, mate. Why do you count them? No, nah, because that was, the, that, that, that was the country, mate. Country oh, okay. was supporting them, mate. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't independent. Anyway... Big up to every one of you, please. To over 200 of you, subscribe, here, please like. subscribe to the channel, like, smash that like, people, because we get the algorithms up. It costs you absolutely nothing. Here, we talk real, man. We talk real. It's listen, I'm not, I don't listen, I don't want to disparage him. I don't want to disparage him. <laughs> I'm not here to, I'm just here to, to explain <laughs> yeah. what Rio said. And I'm not said it, it's in Rio's words. Yeah, all of it is there, Rio's words. I'm not put the words in his mouth. 
He's running mm-hmm. cover he goes, for hey. the bankers and the glazers because that's what you're doing. He goes, I don't want that stuff out in the media. If I was the person running the club, I'd say, talk to us and we'll work it out. But the problem is, though, we don't, they don't work it out. <laughs> so it has to be exposed <laughs> to the club. It has to be exposed to the fans. And Peter, somebody said here, um, I think said, somebody said manufacturing consent. I saw, saw earlier. Uh, where's manufacturing consent? He said something about, we've already known about this. Yeah, ma- manufacturing consent. It's like, Ralph saying anything that we don't already know. But manufacturing yeah. consent, Ralph is saying it in the public, and he's been there for only a couple of months. So he's letting us know, a lot of it is songs that we've alleged. A lot of it is things that we've alleged. Yeah, I've alleged at this football club. Not everybody knows, like me and Sa'i know people who work at the football club. Yeah. We can never mm-hmm. tell you who they are. We can never expose them to that extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've been talking to us for years. Manchester small, you know. Police, I explain to Manchester people. Is very Manchester small, small mate. I'll speak. I'll, I'll, I speak to a guy who works for our foundation, and he says it's it's it, the, the club is very, it's badly run. Obviously, he can't say that. But you know, like I said to you, listen. It's, it's, I'll it's, even go honestly. I know people who work for MUTV, and I see them and I speak <laughs> to them, and they yeah. tell me, I've got, I've, I've got. A, the guy tells me, I've got. Got a kid. I got two kids, mate. Yeah. I got. I got a mortgage to pay. Got a mortgage to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bro. It's damning, you know. It's damning, you know what I mean. No Premier League title till 2040. <laughs> it could be. It, I, you know, Tom. Yeah. When we talk about the, the Premier League, right? It's not the mm. same. You know, as back in the day. You know, like even 10 years ago, as as actually, of course. Yeah, because Leicester are going to be spending money. Wolves. All these clubs are spending money now. Newcastle will spend oh. money. Listen, can we go? I'm your pyramid scheme. Can can I just get, get the right? Windy has her opinion. She's entitled to her opinion. So can we please leave out the insults? Yeah, this is the therapy army. We're all United fans, and some of the people who can come banter us. You're welcome Windy, to Windy banter say? us, right? I don't know what Windy said. Windy was just explaining that Ralph Rani. Windy has then has her. She has her opinion. She has her opinion. So please respect. It. I respect everybody's opinion. I even if I disagree with you, I respect your opinion to our to uh, to disagree with what i'm saying yeah. so please can we not get out the mouth uh, the, the calling the, the names calling and respect each other because sort of piami one thing we're not we're not toxic we all respect each other's opinion yeah, yeah, yeah we of course. even when we disagree we do not I we're, don't a agree community. With we're a community at the end of the day you don't That's agree with are. everything i say so respect needs to be put in order so big up anyway there we go uh working saying to tom dropping more knowledge than flying library yeah. with his own blue more than blue the books there we go. That's right. <laughs> Listen, it is these things that work in football. There's no secrets in football anymore. No, please say no. that. There, there's no secrets in football. No, there isn't. There is no massive science to it. The only science to it is the data analytics that's coming in the last what yeah. decade yeah. or so. Last decade, mm-hmm. even the data years, analytics. What do they? What do they take? What do they say? Last time, I don't know what they say, but they say that McTominay is the hardest working player and all this. But then Listen. again, does it pr- does it produce on the pitch? <laughs> so I don't well, well, it. well, Sa- Saeed, the, the way that they would, the way that they record these things, point that you want. of course, the way that they record these things, the data analysts, they record it on a training pitch. A training well, pitch, a, a training pitch is not Old Trafford. At the end of the day, when you do your measurements of how an, an ordinary training pitch looks like at a training ground, it is completely different to being in a football stadium. And mm-hmm. that is how, that is how you can determine when you have proper data analysis. This is why when you have football teams who necessarily might not have the best training ground facilities, they train at the stadiums. Yeah. They train at the stadiums. This is like when you do Champions League games away, you train the night before at the opposing opposition stadium. That is the best time to get a feel for that pitch and what formation yeah. works, what system works, what sort of tactics Tom, you can employ. You don't even have to go into that. Man United don't have that department. They've got a couple of people with laptops, yeah. Who might go on a match day and do a little bit and maybe do it on training. You know some of our youth teams? Guess where they train? I know. 15, 15 year old training grounds that are AstroTurf, that normal amateur. Like I'm talking about Saturday, Sunday league yeah. teams train. That's where they train. I know. My friend went there to book a pitch. They were like, um, sorry, we can't give you that pitch. The pitch is not available. Man United are training here. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> No, they're like, yeah, he's like, did I hear you right? Man United are training. Yes, you heard us right. Manchester United youth teams are training here. Yeah. Well, you see the youth coaches over time. Are the Hardwick. Coaches, don't you? Is that the yeah, pit? yeah. Said, that's not even talk, bro. Is that the pit stuff? It's another one. There's another one in Hardwick as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's all on the other side of Hardwick. Pits as well. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. 
So you know what? I've said that, you know, and you know what? They're about to win the league. That's so we're not so the new AC Milan. So that's disrespect to AC Milan. See what they did though? Maldini, his dad was there. His son's now oh. playing. You know what he did? He got the right people in, the right technical people in, the right scouting in him. And you know what he did? He oversaw everything. Look at this tomorrow, look at Leal, all look these players doing. that they bought doing. Tonali. Mixture of youngsters, loads of youngsters, and then lots of experience as well. But a club going the right way. And a manager who's been given the go-ahead to go and do what he needs to do. Yeah. And nobody really fancied him, this manager. He he, 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 he managed a team in that. I don't know if anybody... They somebody can us, tell me. The they should have beat us. Yeah, I've got... But listen, they, they would slap us now. They were a different team in their development side. Develop, yeah. they, they were in a different... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They were in a different stage in their development. Yeah, of course. Now, they would smash us, mate. Five, six. We will hold five, six, mate. Easy, easy. You ain't hold... You know, the way we, we don't track back. Are you kidding me? Let, let, let him man like Liao on the loose. Liao's a player, by the way. Good night, Vienna, mate. Listen, how he did that's, play a, that's, a, that's another that's thing, though, for the for the bro. recruitment again. Listen, big up David Iore. Thank you for the super chat, bro. What what Raf should say, <laughs> everything is okay. Like to the fans as usual. Is that, that, that's what he should be doing. That's what he should do. He should that's what Rio what, should that's what it's all rolls that, around that's here. That's what listen, that's what Rio's basically doing. That's what he's doing. Just say it's all rosy around there. Just I, I, I pretend everything's okay. Ralph has integrity. Finally, someone that you're not with integrity. Of course. Listen, of course. the other person who's got incredible integrity, manufacturing consent, is a woman called Casey Stoney. Yes. Absolute big up to Casey Stoney. When yeah, she realized yeah. what the club was doing to the women's team, yeah, she said, All the best, all the George best to you all. I'll catch me if you can. That's what she said to them. Yeah. I'll see you later. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. That's what she said. And yeah. you know what? I big her up every time. Tom, does anybody else in the fan base bring Stacey Coney in the conversations that are more than me? No, well, no, no. You know why? Because I know when somebody has got integrity, you should absolutely big them up. Because yeah. if yeah. anything else, she's got that. She will forever be successful because she's got that. If she hasn't got anything else, she's got that abundance. And the words that I add to it, she's an incredible coach. Yeah. And how many players yes, left yes. United after she left? I know. It's, like, it's like the gates have opened, mate. Yeah, front gates are open. Yeah, yeah and they all the, got off. Now the women's team is a better place now. Better place now, hot yeah. donkly, because this guy came in and restructured them for yeah. Said to said to Murta and the rest of them, listen, if you don't give me control yeah, and give I'm me what win. I don't want and support me, then your team's gonna be what is Man United now or what in fourth? Yeah, 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 third yeah. yeah. Third of fourth. Yeah, third of fourth. Yeah, oh. they need to respect. They need to respect to um Chelsea though, don't they? Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea are the team to beat, really, in the women's listen, league. Can we please listen to what's going on in the fan base? Stephen Dixon, you cannot disagree with Rio Mark. Rio Mark does not need to keep his mouth shut. Rio Mark has got an opinion like everybody else. We've got to keep it where it is. Let's yeah, not yeah. get like, let's get it twisted. Let's not, let's not fight it. amongst ourselves, guys. Let's not become what the toxins are. Therapy army is always together. We like our therapy in different ways. We like it in small doses. We like a single <laughs> along now and again. Some of us like to get in the comments. Some of us like to overdose. Some of them like to overdose. But here, what are we? She are we? Who are we? Are we? She are we, Tom? That's what we are. <laughs> That's what we are, guys. That's the true fact of the matter. So we don't need no ticks us to hear. Here, somebody says here, if you don't agree, you can say your piece, but please, guys, no toxicity here. Exactly. Absolutely. Big up to We me. need to listen. Yeah, yeah. Peace. We need peace, mate. Peace. The only time we can have is peace because we're not having any of that at watching United, mate. No peace. We've not. In the past oh, 10 years, uh, in the past 10 years, we've all felt like we've all felt the Glazers are who? Glazers are Will Smith. And we're all like, we're all like, what? Backhand. We are, we are all in the camp. We are all the physical embodiment. Of yeah. Chris Rock, you should put it in the background and show people. <laughs> Chris Rock, I've, 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 I've never looked forward to a summer as much as this one, though. <laughs> never, never, you. never, be, never before at this football club, anyway. It won't be in there, it won't be in there, it, it, it won't be in there. <laughs> it, no, no, it's not that, it won't be in here. I, I've not saved oh, okay. it on today, I've not saved okay. it on today. I've saved it on the laptop, uh, on, on, the, on, 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 the, phone, on yeah. the phone, yeah, phone, yeah, but not on the yeah. laptop, yeah. Listen, big up, big up to every one of you. The slap you've seen the meme in it, Man United. <laughs> this yep. is the fan base. Backhand. It's the past decade. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's been. So yeah, it's still relevant. Of course it is because they're innovators. Uh, Ajax football. Ajax as a football club and Dutch football has had a mm. massive impact on world football. Easy. They're one Absolutely. of the most incredible, impactful football. Like for example, I, I, I listen. I, I, I measure when somebody says to me, "Yeah, 
You know how Jamaica, Jamaica has influenced musically still to this day. Small island, yeah, yeah, of course, in, has an incredible, massive cultural output. Mali, exactly the same Holland as a as a as a as a country, and specifically Ajax as a football club yeah. has a has had the most influence in world football. But you don't see Barcelona without Ajax. You yeah. don't see the fo footballers. Right. You don't see the total football. Exactly, you don't see yeah. the way that model teams play without cross philosophy. You don't see how people like Pep Guardiola have added to it. You know how Facts. people have stolen from them. You don't think Fergie never stole from Ajax way of, of playing with the fullbacks or Parker and Erwin attacking up yeah. and down that big. You don't think he's done that. You don't think about great wing back when he's back in the day, 4 4 2 Ajax used to play. Yeah, yeah. With like mm, yeah. two wingers that are going up and down. True, true. Are you not Facts. kidding me? Everybody influences everybody. Yeah. That's what football ain't. They're one of the original clubs. Original clubs, mate. Yeah. And Dutch, there are so many Dutch footballing godfathers. There's so oh, many. Absolutely. So yeah. big up, man. Big up. So I say it again, people. Playing for the like, yeah, Super Knicks always on the money. Yeah. Playing for this cause made these players complicit. Money sweeteners have removed the love they had for the club. Oh. It's all about the glory. Glory, so glory, really man. Yeah, right. You nah, see what Andy Mitten said in this QA. Did you see anything? I didn't see it, bro. I didn't see it. But no, I haven't, I haven't seen this. In the, what Andy Mitten says. What's Andy Mitten said? Andy Mitten sometimes runs cover for United as well. He, he, he interviewed Ed Woodward and never pressed him on a proper question. <laughs> softballed him. Softballed him. Yeah, him. but we, 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 we know uh, with, with interviews that happen and stuff, they they release the questions before they even ask them. But, that, but, I, but as a journalist, Tom, you have to have some integrity and go, no. Yeah, of course you, you do. serious question. But, but, but no, 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 the only problem is when you say no, that's it. And it's not just that's it for that interview. You will I never, mean, ever get a, another chance again to interview somebody at the football club. That is just how it works, unfortunately. So you can do it with your integrity and everything. And even if you ask the question, all they've got to do, right, turn the camera off. I said that I didn't want to ask that question in the build-up. Subscribe to briefing. their podcast. Listen, big up, man. Listen, uh, Central Football TV, like, we always big out. Here, we're not gatekeepers. Yeah. We always big out every community. So, people, I want you to go and check out Central Football TV. There's enough Man United fans to check out all yeah. of this type of content. Yeah, yeah, come on, big people. Up for this. So, I just read Central it out for Central Football TV. Oh, shit, my guys, your inspiration, me and content inspired to make my own channel. Your content is great. Please make my dream come true and shout out my channel. Yeah, man. Bro, anytime, TV. people, people. Make sure please, you subscribe to them. Make sure you subscribe to Central uh, Football TV. At what the end cover, of the day. What do they cover? Just channel football? Yeah, yeah. What do you cover? Let us know what you cover. Give specifics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Cover on your football. Give specifics. Uh, because AC Milan went back to basics and allowed football people making football. Of course they did. Of course yep. they did, Shabir. It's not rocket science. Yeah, it's not. It's not rock. The quicker Man United do it, the better. The quicker the Man United do it, the better. Yeah. Florin, what's said about the women's team? All parts of the organisation have to be focused on, not just about men. Of course it is. Of course, Windy. And now, the club propaganda now, because 60,000 fans are so distracted, they absolutely can't stand the men's team, yeah. have now all bought tickets for the... For the for the, uh, Cup. For the Cup final. Now the club are tweeting that now. Yeah. Tweeting that going, oh, no, you, no, mate, get off that train, mate. Get off that train, Neil Ashton. Get off that train. Stop trying to get some brownie points for the football club because of the youth team. The fans are dejected. That's why 60,000 of them said, yeah. we want to go to that game. We're why? To, game. to go and watch a team that at least gives us a bit of hope in the future. That's the reason why they're going. Yeah. They're not going because that your toxicity, we can't stand it. We can't stand your propaganda. So we're going to shout for the younger boys. We should yeah, rather yeah. do that. So yeah. shut they're, your mouth, they, they, they are the true heroes, though, this football club and the women's team for this season anyway. DJ, man. We got to TJ. Big up TJ, man. Was, was really close to giving up my season ticket after that shambles I witnessed. Bro. Yo, TJ. He's bro. up and down as well. This Listen. This, he's always up and down the country. <laughs> TJ, I saw you on the sky clip, bro. You're there again in that front row. <laughs> just stood there like that, like you've just been hit the by... The biggest uh... one was Everton one. Listen, no, no, no. He's there again. They've done him and again. I've seen that. I've seen that. But I'm saying the biggest one was with Everton. Only when he's by that, when he's head on his uh, eye, it? it? was like horror, And horror. you know what, TJ? You always love a 4-0, don't you? <laughs> Uh, TJ loves the 4 0 so When he's on camera, he's like, yo, 4 0. He's like, camera, sky camera on me. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's, honestly, as soon as you like can see 4, sky camera's on TJ, mate, like Tupac. All eyes on me. All TJ's eyes on there, me. mate, in the middle of Ambit. All eyes on me. We've got 4. I got 4 on it. All eyes on me. Remixing the songs, mate, yeah. TJ. 
TJ, it's your DJing skills, mate. That's why you get kept getting, getting caught in that camera room, boy. It's your DJing and your remixing <laughs> skills, mate. <laughs> oh, gosh, that is hilarious. If you don't know people, it's our brethren, TJ, isn't it? TJ, home and away, mate. Home and away, mate. Home and away, mate. Get home and away. It's one of them, minute Green and gold to the club sold part of that, my gang, man. So big up, yeah. big up to you, bro. But TJ, you need to get the banner out, bro. What did I say to you? Get the banner out, TJ. You're one of our Palace. guys. Palace. Get that banner out away at Palace, TJ. Come on now. Get that banner out. Get yeah. that banner out. Ask Sky, first of all, do a little message. Sky, turn that camera away from me. Number two, I don't like my four nils. I don't want any more of it. Number three, <laughs> Blazers out. Bankers out. All day, every day, tw seven days a week, 24-7, day, every second, every minute of the day. Yep. People, smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Like Murto did with the youth as well. Yeah, big up. Listen, we big up Murta for that. He did good. Yeah, yeah. He the right people. But at the end of the day, doing that at youth level and doing that for real. Two different things. When you're competing with the teams we're competing with, we're competing with Brighton. Look at the Brighton. Look at the money they spent. Please, I beg you, somebody did it on Twitter. Can somebody please drag that up? They did a breakdown. How much? Brighton football footballers team yeah, cost yeah, to Man United levels. Chris Rock FC, mate, you know it. We are Chris Rock FC, mate. We're watching out. The Glazers, I'm telling you, like, like Will Smith, every time, every time they see us, it's on site, innit? They keep slapping us. We've been taking <laughs> as a fan base forever. That's why Fergie and Gil left at the same time. Historical context to the shit. Things don't happen in a vacuum. I keep telling it to you guys. Things don't happen in a vacuum. Everybody at the club there is keeping their mouth shut. They got bills to pay, they tell me. Yeah. They tell me a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Don't you ever dare expose me. Don't ever say my name on your stream. I'm like, I will never do that to anybody anyway. Yeah. But they always say, no, you, you can't say this. No, you can't say that. It's come from me. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh. And you know what? Somebody then came for me on Twitter, yeah? I wanted, whoever you were, I want you on the Twitter space, genuinely. And he said, your, your guy told you uh, that Pochettino was coming. Saeed, can you let people know, please? Pochettino, Mark Ogden. So when Mark Ogden breaks the news and goes out, even from this, uh, what's his name? The, something Laurie Whitwell. And yeah, Laurie Whitwell, right, well, yeah. And all yeah, these yeah. guys, yeah? When they get briefed, no, nothing's been done yet. And Man United are still doing interviews. And then Mark Ogden goes out, right? And then gets briefed by somebody who's got a good contact with. He's been there for years covering United, for years oh, and course, years, right? Course. When he yeah, goes yeah. out and says... Eric Ten Hag is going to be Man United manager next season. Goes out. You all go, ah, celebrate. But then you forget. You miss out. So you're becoming selective with that with that bit yeah. of the truth, innit? Mark Ogden then said, the reason why Pochettino ain't mania because Man United were not willing to pay £15 million in compensation. So, yeah. he, how favourite was, was Pochettino? Mate, it was, Tom? Absolutely, it was favourite. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I told you, did I not, many times. No, in November, it was Pochettino or Boss. That was the only man they ever wanted. They didn't even consider Ten Hag a candidate at the end yeah. of the day. He was a target, but he wasn't a candidate. If, yeah. and, I said, and I revert back to the same point. If they could have got Pochettino, regardless of the money, and I said this many a times to everybody, and he's coming out again now about how Pochettino was so close to joining, the reason why he didn't come in November wasn't because he didn't want to come, wasn't because Man United didn't want to pay the money, was because PSG could not get one of their prime replacements to replace him mid-season. They couldn't get one of their three main targets that they wanted to replace yeah. Pochettino in the middle of the season. So, in in effectiveness, if they could, if they could have got Zidane Zidane, they could have got a, a Conte or a Nagelsmann. These are the sort of coaches that I know PSG have looked at or have earmarked as target managers for them, if they could have got one of those two, we would be sitting here now with Mauricio Pochettino's manager. Ten Hag would not have happened. Ragnik wouldn't have happened. None yeah. of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. I will guarantee anybody who wants that. If you would, if you go back and you revert to everything that all the major broadcasting organisations said, all the reporters had said and everything, it was Pochettino or bust in November. You didn't hear a word of Eric Ten Hag anywhere. And if, if you don't if you don't believe me, go and have a look back at the reports. Go as far back as November all the way through until Christmas Day. And you'll see all of the reports there. It's Pochettino or it's bust. But and Tom, at the end of the day, even two, three months ago, point. they were still saying it was Pochettino. Yeah. People at the club, because that's what they the club wanted. But when they found out the clause, 
There is fifteen billion pound package. They were like, mm, "How much that cost costing?" Yeah, it was all about money at the end. And also, they did the debates on my United TV, and then they probably gathered information that the the fans were to tell Hag. I mean, the biggest thing was Gary Neville. He did a poll on his on he's got five million followers. Yeah, on Twitter. It's lagging, by the way. Neil Ashton is on it when we're talking about the bit that matter, actually. Yeah. But Neil Ashton is on it. At the end of the day, Tom, Tom, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, lads. Yeah, yeah. So basically, Gary Neville did a tweet in it. He tweeted, he said, Tanago Pochettino. Yeah. 80-something percent of the fans came back. Everybody was like, no, because we were like, there's a reason why we don't want Pochettino. We've already seen Pochettino. Can we try yeah, somebody course. new, please? Of course. Yeah, That's yeah. The reason. I didn't want Pochettino. I, I, I called him Alacino. But when I saw <laughs> people who were connected to the club, you know what they said to me? He's still favourite. Yep. Yeah. The, big, the people won it. But what did, what did Gary Neville then say? Of course, they're going to listen to the fans because yep. he's more popular. Tanag's more popular. Of course. Get the hell out of here, man. Yep. And yep. you know what? Tom, also remind people, please, Tom. Mm. Me and you have spoken about this a number of times. Man United, when when he, the, that, that 2 nil horrendous defeat in, I think it was a January or one of the months, I think it was, Oli was on the titters getting sacked. Oh, yeah, the Burnley game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Early game, yeah. And Pochettino, game. conversation was had with Pochettino. Even after the Everton game in November. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, he went on... Um, yeah. What was he on? He was on Monday Night Football on the Monday and then we would played Burnley the following Saturday. It was around yeah. about the time we were linked with Bruno Fernandes and everything. Yeah, and yeah. The reason, the re yeah, the reason why they didn't pull the trigger on Oli at the time was because A, Pochettino was hesitant over, right, do I want to join mid-season? And do I want to come to this shit show? And B, <laughs> yeah. they were focusing on getting Bruno Fernandes. They did the whole... PR behind it, the whole um, announcement video, everything. They focused all on that. And it still dragged out until later in the window anyway. And yep. so then they just stuck with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Even another another game, um, Rudin, they went to... Uh, who did they play now? The, I can't remember the game before anyway. Um, I think it was when we got knocked out of the Champions League. I can't remember. And then we went to Everton. This was behind the closed doors. Yeah, and yeah. I think, I, think we, I think we slapped them up, uh, was it 3-1? I can't remember. I think it was the game after. Yeah, it was after the game where he should have been sacked only before that. Yeah, game. yeah, 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 yeah. There was yeah. all the rumours coming out saying that he was already sacked and these sort of things and that. And he got through the end of the game. He won the game. And then he went on the run for about, I think it was a six game, seven game unbeaten run. Yeah. I've never talked about it again. And the, these are the same points. If, if, if you're going to make a decision, make it. Regardless if people are going to like it, hate it, or love it. If you think you do know the right decision, you do it. Yeah, no, and you don't do it with your head, you do it with your heart at this football club. That's what we need to be doing. Get back to the basics. Don't think with your head and think dollar signs, brilliant, Erling Haaland, right? Let's get him in, let's get him through the door. Brilliant young prospect. No, we should be signing these players not from when he was at Salzburg, from when he was at Mulder. Proper, proper you using your contacts around the world in your European markets, your Scandinavian markets, your South American markets, even your Middle Eastern markets where you're getting a through through uh, young players coming through the ranks. These are the sort of areas you need to be targeting. Yeah. And th and this is where we always say, as a football team on the football pitch, I say we're five years away. But as a whole football club, we are a decade behind everybody else in every Easy. single department. Scouting, recruitment, health and development, sports science, data analysts, the whole lot of it. We are completely behind by a decade. All of these football clubs open their doors to cameras. Have you noticed that anybody as well? When you look oh. at the top, top, top six teams, they allow the access to speak to people inside the club in terms of your senior doctors, your psychiatrists, all the major people who run behind the scenes. Man United have not opened their doors ever as a football club. And I mean ever. This is even before the Glazers. They've never opened the football club to go and speak to people who do the behind the scenes work. So who can you credit if we won we won a league title? Who can you credit if they've helped a, a young player recover from a, a you know severe injury over time? Like for example, some of the doctors did for Luke Shaw, where he yeah. was out for for nine months. He was told he'd never play again by a privatized doctor. You will never ever play again, Luke. But the club doctors did the work on him, put it, got the motivation back into him, and he played again. Oxlade Chamberlain is another example at Liverpool. Shocking injury. Terrible injury. He was he was told he was never going to recover fully. Not not play again, but he was never going to recover fully to play at the highest level. He still plays now, though, doesn't he? 
Mm -hmm. These are what we talk about. And this is why I say and revert back to the same point about our football club. We are a decade behind in terms of everything behind the scenes. Everything. And it's okay sacking all these people like we are doing. Where is these replacements coming from? Where are they? Honestly, it's took us long enough to hire a manager. It it takes us, God knows how, it takes us weeks and drawn out negotiations to sign a player. How long is it going to take us to actually build this structure? Three, four years until we find the right people out there. Yeah, we should joke. know. We should. It's and you know something? We, we should. Yeah, we shouldn't know. We shouldn't it, actually know. Actually, I, I we should clowns, already have these people. I'm going to shout him out, right? So I'm going. You know what? Listen, I'm going to shout him. Out. I'm going to get back to him. So hopefully, we'll do a debate, and I'll let you guys know because my guy here wants to come and debate me about the football structure. He can. He's saying that I'm making an issue of Ralph uh, of Eric Ten Hag arg, arguing. The, t- the, the his backroom stuff that he wants to bring in at this football club, it'll all be sorted. How how do you know you fucking Neil Ashton? But well, there you go. <laughs> but he couldn't be sent from the job. Piss off, mate. Piss off. Listen, <laughs> if you want to have a quick debate? Come and show your face. I hate people who are on Twitter who don't sh- never show their face. Do it. Do it on the Twitter spaces. And, 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 listen and come in the space and let's hear your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah? of course. Yeah, no problem. Listen, big up, big up, Tom. Big up, Sati. Listen, uh, we got one more shout out. Central Football TV. Big up. He wants to get to one, one, one K. Get one K. Get him Let's to get him K. there. Let's get him, get him there, people. Come on. You're, you're big up, big up. He does general football content. But p- by the way, people, please head over to, after this now, head over to Sa'i TV, 400 away from 50,000 followers. That's incredible of achievement because he don't do no clickbaiting. He don't do any of this BS. He just grinds and talks about Man United, the club he loves. So please go over there and subscribe to that channel. And make yes. sure you like the video up there as well. Please, there's over 200 of you here. On your way smash out, a like. smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Glazes oh, out. Glazes out every day, all day. And Rio Ferdinand, respect you as a ch- as a legend. You've won many trophies. You are a European Cup winning, Champions League winning captain. Double winning captain. You know, I respect you. got nothing but love for you. Always real. We'll always defend you against groups who there who are getting personal about yeah. your into about your personal life. But I'm sorry to say, you've let down one of your biggest pe- one of the fans of you today. You've let me down, and you've let me down on the extreme level because you want Man United to be behind closed doors. They have been like behind closed doors. The problem yeah. is that have they got you to sign NDA? That means non disclosure agreement. Have they got you to sign that? Because that's what <laughs> you're talking like for me. You're talking like you're protecting the Glazers and the bankers. Yeah. I'm sorry. They need to be exposed. It's been long time coming. Coming. If Facts. you love this football club, you want the fans to know what the hell is going on, mate. Yeah. Because you, where's your fan? Where are you as a fan? Where is your loyalty to the mm-hmm. supporters? Forget to these bankers. Your brand is big as you know. You don't need them. You don't need them. Their brand is going down anyway. You don't need their brand. <laughs> their brand is toxic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big up, man. Big up to every one of you. Big up Super Nick, Windy, Khalees, Tenno, The H, Central TV, Splash, Mika, Nayi, everybody, man. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, Thank everybody, you, yeah. Let's be having Who are you? you? Who are you? Shit, are, are we? Who are we? Comedy Banker <laughs> FD. There we go. That's what Please. we run by. That's what we run by. And the last thing I'll say, I said the, the reason why we're players were getting big contracts even though they didn't deserve it. I said it at a time, and now pe- journalists are writing about it and investigating it. Well, journalists, we reject it. It's too late. Someone like me, who just, guy in Hume, was saying to people, why do you think these players are getting these contracts? Yeah. It's to do with the stock exchange, how to keep the, the price the high. And you know what? Journalists are going, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's the reason why. <laughs> Five, go. six years too late, mate. We reject your... PR, we reject your now nah, last game, last game, man. United, yeah. too late, mate. Ralph has come, shamed you all. You all should be ashamed of yourselves to the profession of journalism. You're all part of the manufacturing consent, mate. You're all absolute cratons. That's what you are. Big up journalists like Tom, big up other investigative journalists out there who do real journalism, real mm-hmm. journalism, j- journalism. Big up. Who have got yeah, no yeah. agenda to protect, no brands to protect. No, I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. None of that, mate. <laughs> Peace, Peace, love, Peace. Light, yeah, yeah. lasers, bankers, out. Tom, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me on, uh, on Twitter at TomJournalist1. Big up, Tom. 
Saeed. Saeed TV. You know Everywhere. All, all the social. All the, all the, the socials, socials. man. Big Love up. and respect, people. Take care.